So got my kings here. These will be going on the front of the truck. lift kryptonite springs from poly performance so all that gonna go on here and we'll see if they're actually worth it stock rides pretty decent but also like complete shit so hoping the Kings save me from Hitting those nasty G outs on the freeway and almost getting sent completely into the K rail. So we'll see. So I've got some before and after shots just rolling over a speed bump. Um, the before is with my two and a half inch leveling spacer. Uh, the spacer just goes on top of the coil spring and it is a deadly ride. It does not ride smooth whatsoever. And then I got some after shots with the Kings and the coil springs. So got the springs in, almost lost a couple fingers, but got them in there and had to take the sway bar off, just the four bolts up top on the frame side. You gotta loosen this. Not loosen, but take this brake bracket off, just leave it loose so everything can dangle. Same with your uh, four wheel drive vacuum lines. Um, and then just gotta squeeze in the spring. And then the other side, I'll show you the track bar. I just disconnected the track bar right here. If you don't do that, which I was trying to get away with not doing it, then the whole axle will shift uh, towards the driver's side and you won't be able to get the passenger spring in. So I had to remove sway bar, track bar, and brake lines. And then also this vacuum line drop right here. And then they go right in. Now I'm gonna put the king shocks in and throw it back up. And if you don't have any mechanical skills, definitely don't try this, just pay someone to do it. This isn't the easiest job, but it's also pretty easy, so go for it. So before you start your install, make sure you have everything out of the car that you will need. Uh, it is unsafe to crawl into the vehicle, so you want to make sure kids or anything important are left out of the car, like, like your dog. For putting the king shocks on, uh, they come pre-filled with nitrogen, so they are very hard to compress. Um, I'm guessing they have like 150 PSI. That's what King 2.5 standardly run at, but I don't know. The valving in these must be very stiff because I wasn't able to compress them at all. I had to drop out the axle enough to bolt it up, and that was the only way I could do it. They will not compress. So that's pretty much it. Uh, putting the shocks on is very straightforward. Same way you took the stock ones off. Just follow the instructions on how the bushings and nut and washer go. And then tighten your bottom one. And that's it. Sway bar is back on, track bar is back on. Shocks are on. So now I'm gonna jack up the front axle, throw the tires on spin the truck around and then do the rear shocks which are just it's direct swap so from stock ones to king removing the spare tire is not mandatory i just did it because it's useless to me i already have a full-size spare in the bed 
Um, again, with the compression, I used the jack uh, with full droop of the axle to get the shock in because they are very hard to compress. So, just finished up. Uh, the king's in. As well as the coil springs. Got about the same ride height I had before, which is what I wanted. Just level. And now, it should be a lot smoother. So uh, had to test out the before going backwards because of course you're going to be hitting a lot of bumps while in reverse. It's just mandatory. I know these before and after shots don't really prove anything or really show anything. But I will say King Shocks do handle substantially better on the Super Duty than factory or with a leveling spacer. If you're going to lift your fifty dollars to $100,000 truck, you might as well buy once and buy the best there is, buy King Shocks. They're fully rebuildable. You won't have to buy shocks ever again. You can just rebuild them. So one downfall I've noticed is... 